Well, hello there. Marcus Nopkins here, founding editor of SiliconAngle.com, and uh, I am here today. I'm joined by Jason Anderson of DataLink, and uh, we're, we're talking storage. We're talking uh, uh, NetApp a little bit. Uh, NetApp's big announcement, of course, came out today, and we wanted to kind of get some thoughts from some folks in the field that uh, have a sense of uh, you know what these technologies are best used for, and you know uh, how how customers are, are reacting to them. So, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us today, Jason. No problem. Yeah. So uh, tell tell me and uh, the viewers a little bit about uh, uh, who you are and uh, what data what uh, what you guys do over at DataLink. So uh, I'm Jason Anderson, principal architect uh, for DataLink. Um, DataLink is a, a data center. Uh, infrastructure solutions provider um, based in Minneapolis with a, uh, a national um, sized organization around the country um, uh, primarily focused on data center infrastructure for medium to uh, large size businesses um, so storage network and compute um, my role as principal architect is to focus on um, our largest most strategic customers uh, especially in the upper Midwest um, on uh, solving their their problems in uh, data center infrastructure so, you, and you guys, what kind of customers are you focused on? SMBs or enterprise? How, how big? What's the range of size where you guys like to, where your sweet spot is? So, we primarily focus on organizations that are Fortune 1000, and uh, um, we do some work with uh, smaller companies, but primarily focus on uh, Fortune 1000. And uh, our largest customers uh, um, get well into the uh, Fortune 100 size. Wow. Okay. So, uh, and, and the, the type of work that you guys do with them is, is focused on, what, building data centers for them, or, or helping them architect solutions in house, or uh, or they they out farm it out to you guys, or how's it work? No, we we are we're an on-premises um, uh, company. We aren't in the uh, kind of the outsourcing model. Um, we do do managed services, but our primary focus is around um, helping com customers build out the technology in their data centers, um, storage, network, and compute um, to get towards you know, if you want to be buzzword compliant towards software-defined data center, <laughs> private cloud. Right. Um, that type of uh, uh, capability. So, so uh, yeah, buzzword compliance. That's uh, I, I, yeah, that, that, that takes me back. That word. Um, so anyway, uh, the the buzz. Let's talk about the buzzword compliance around software led. That's that's like the big new thing that everyone in in the media seems to be latching onto is with uh, with Pivotal and VMware and all these recent developments in the in the virtualization space. So, talk a bit about software led and like customer sentiment around it. Is this something that they're reacting against or clamoring for? I've seen a wide range of sentiment from okay. customers that um, feel that it's it's a you know, little more than hype mm -hmm. with no real meat there to customers that have fully bought in and are realigning everything from their um, organizations to their spend to all of their planning around um, software-defined data center. So it's a, a pretty wide range range of sentiment uh, across the customers I've talked to talked to about it. So, if you were to, if you're looking at your customers specifically, are they, uh, what percentage of them are are trying to uh, uh, kind of move towards uh, kind of a software-led approach to to their to the data center design, or and what ones are are what percentage is maybe resistant to it? So, I would say that they're all taking steps towards okay. what is generally described as software-led you know, or software-defined data center. It's really mm -hmm. a matter of whether they see it as being something really revolutionary or whether it's really just uh, putting a fancy label on kind of the general technology trend of increased integration of the software layer, um, increased automation, and the ability to kind of more vertically integrate the capabilities of your infrastructure as opposed to having silos of capability with siloed teams to manage it. Mm -hmm. So, so what are the key differentiators you guys are seeing uh, with clustered uh, clustered data on tap, the, the C dot thing? Uh, is that uh, is that something that uh, you 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 see as a, a market departure from from other options in the industry? Or is this something that is a nice nice uh, logical evolutionary step? Well, I think that one of the things it brings to the table is um, the ability to take a scale of architecture and match it to the general purpose um, IT use case as opposed to it being siloed in specific verticals. Mm -hmm. So scale of architectures um, aren't new. Um, they've been around sure. for, for a while, but in many cases they've been restricted to either um, specific areas of high performance computing or geoseismic where there was a, a big concentration of, of, uh, of compute to go with the storage. One of the major things about clustered ONTAP is its ability to be like uh, the seven mode ONTAP that preceded it, very general purpose and be able to use by a lot of companies to solve the, the general IT case uh, with it. 
So that's what I'm hearing a lot uh, in, in talking to different folks that uh, have some experience with it. It's general purpose, but uh, who are the who are the likely targets that are going to want to clamor for this first? Who are who are the ones that are going to be best uh, be best suited by by adopting the new technology? I think that the customers that have kind of grown tired of having islands of storage, uh, been grown tired with having siloed capabilities in in uh, large numbers of arrays that they're struggling to manage with uh, large teams. Um, are going to be some of the uh, best candidates for rolling out clustered on tap um, because of its ability to kind of collapse the uh, storage infrastructure into um, a, a smaller number of large clusters um, you can reduce the uh, um, the, the number of, of management instances reduce the complexity of an environment uh, pretty significantly um, without giving up any of the uh, of functionality that you kind of expect from NetApp so uh, this, is, this is an interesting question that was passed to me by one of the, the analysts. How do you expect uh, the SLAs to change uh, once a customer implements, implements CDOT? So I think that the, uh, uh, one of the important focuses that NetApp has put into clustered ONTAP is their push around non-disruptive operations. Mm -hmm. uh, and so while the, uh, the current uh, general availability release that uh, just came out uh, very recently in 8.2 um, doesn't get the system 100% uh, of the way there. Um, the, the, the trajectory is very clear that getting to a point of fully non-disruptive operation, not just for a current generation of, of array that a customer would deploy, but across multiple generations. And that's one of the things that really changes the game. Um, there's been a lot of vendors, a lot of products that have, have been able to maintain exceptional uptime once an array is deployed. But the real trick is when you go to life cycle that array into the next generation. And uh, Cluster Nontap is uh, pretty unique in its ability to maintain that non-disruptive operation while also performing lifecycle tasks. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So well, it's been uh, interesting to hear from you. Uh, I think uh, I've exhausted every question I could I could plumb out of you. Unless there's some some other some other uh, information you're 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 dying to share with me. Uh, I I can't think of anything else that uh, uh, any other aspect of this. Is this a uh, it's been a very interesting news cycle, though. I'd be, uh, be interested to see uh, the more reactions as they come out. Indeed. Well, good to chat with you. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. All right. All right. We're out. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Have a good weekend.